what is going on guys Azul back here uh bot review medicine regionals uh we're here with round four uh we got zach taylor alternate crossman for zach samora uh with his executor zorark deck so now i'm not i'm not really uh, uh i don't have a ton of experience with, with playing either of these decks uh my information might be a little bit lacking uh it looks like we do have uh zamora going first um Opens the execute, pressures letter, gets the rule. Um, ideally, he wants to see a um, what's it called here? Um, Bridget. Hopefully, we see a Bridget from him turn one to see ideal setup. Uh, he's looking for Bridget turn one, get some eggs, get some zeros in play. Uh, he searches out the grass and the fighting. Grass is for his, one of his primary attackers, which is the execution. Go ahead and attach it immediately. Uh, choice band is Zorark, um, and then Sycamore. Um, I don't know if if the choice band placement really matters in this matchup at all. I don't think he can ever one shot anything, uh, with the choice band actually. <clears throat> um, and he'll pass. So salt start overall two two execute two zero out. That's that's fine if he gets out the uh, two Zorark and maybe an execute swinging next turn. Uh, he's not looking for much else. That's pretty. That's pretty good. I almost feel like the choice band should have been on the active though. Um, <clears throat> so we just carded one fighting off the sycamore. Um, unsure. <clears throat> Excuse me. Unsure if he's gonna be able to find more. Um, basic energy to this card. You don't know. You definitely want to set this up for a two shot. So right now he's doing forty damage. Seventy damage should be enough to set up a two shot from a Zorak or an egg later in the game. Um, so I think the choice band probably should have been attached to the active. Um. Uh, we see Treasure plus Ultra Ball from uh, our Ultra Necrozma player. He gets an Inke and Lele for Lily. Uh, so he's setting up decently over on his side as well. Uh, Beast Energy the active as well. So that's pretty solid. <clears throat> and we'll see the Lily for eight. Uh, looks like a treasure, maybe some other stuff. I don't know if he wants to treasure this turn or if he's going to look to go for Malamar next turn. Yeah, I don't think there's really anything he needs to get this turn. Uh, we see draw from Zamora, Ultra Ball, Choice Band, and a third energy. Looks like we're going for Lele. Um, it's counting puzzles right now. Uh, looks like he's gonna go for Lele though. Uh, looking to it, he's looking to definitely just want. He just wants to hit the alternate cross with this turn. He can't one shot it, so he wants to set up a two shot. Um, Wonder Tags. Do again. Looks like he's going for N. Take N. All right. So yeah, now there's only two energy in this card pile, so we'd be hitting the active for sixty. So once again, I think this choice band uh, should have been on the active egg just to try and make it easier to set up a two shot um, on the alternate cross one because he can't one shot. The deck does not one shot. Basically, I guess in this matchup, I think their main strategy would be to streamline eggs. Um, he's counting energy right now, so see, he would be swinging for sixty. Uh, he has Ultra Ball, looks like two Ultra Balls, so he could Ultra Ball for Egg this turn, and then it looks like he doesn't have his draw support, so he could Ultra Ball for Lele next turn. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, and he's going to go for the Egg, uh, a little Executor, but he's only going to be hitting for, like I said, he's only going to be hitting for uh, 60 damage, could be hitting for 90, which means he would only need to find one energy to put in the discard pile next turn of a different type, and then he could get the Knockout. Um, yep, two. See, the, yeah, the Choice Band definitely should have been on the active. He just wanted to try and force a two shot as soon as possible. Um, and attaching to active would have done just that. Uh, over to uh, our alternate crossover player side. He's got the letter. He's got a, a treasure. Um, I'm not sure what else he has in his hand. He's probably He definitely wants to look to knock out this executor. I think this is it's how the game is going to go down. Is this going to be Zamora trying to streamline executors because they're a little bit awkward for Zach's deck to knock out. He can really only use ultra necrozma to knock them out consistently and um it requires uh two energy each time so if you start chasing malamars with executors uh knocking out malamars he just might eventually just not be able to keep up with how with the uh with knocking out executors and it's only worth one prize each time he knocks one out so i don't know we'll have to see uh yeah so he treasures for the malamar uh has a second malamar in hand but he does not have much else going on in his hand actually uh, I don't know if it's dead. That could be a Lele. It's hard for me to tell with the Rainbow Rare. I think there's two Choice Bands and two Beast Rings, though. Um, so he does not... He really does not have much going on. Benches. Another Ultra Necrozma. Does not... Uh, so I'm not sure how many Psychic Energy are in his discard pile. So that that factors in as if, if you Malamar or not. But I think he had quite a few. 
Um, I want to check this real fast. So he stretches in one, two, Sycamore. Oh, he maybe just had two. Um, so I don't hate. I would maybe Malamar once at least, because um, it's not unlikely that you get another psychic in your discard pile next turn. So that you want to be able to abuse both psychic recharges. Um, so I think top deck. We just saw a top deck puzzle from uh, Zach. Letter. He's gonna get. See, and here he goes. He's gonna easily get the two uh, more energy he was looking for <clears throat> in the discard pile to boost the damage. Um, so if he just attached once again, just attach choice band to the active. Uh, we would have seen a knockout this turn instead of. So it'll probably be next turn. We'll have to see. He might still be able to get it. Um, but he's got four, so he's swinging for 100. So he need a choice ban uh, to make up for this damage or two more energy types. No, you can't quite. You can't hit that much. With, we'll hit 120 max. So yeah, he would need a choice ban. Um, he's already down two choice ban. I don't think it runs. The deck runs three. I think it only runs two. Um, so I don't think we're going to see a knockout this turn. So once again, the choice ban was wasted kind of on the benched Zorark. Um, I think it definitely should have been attached to the Executor. We already went over this. Uh, we're just trying to look to two shot. Ideally, we're just trying to two shot with this deck aggressively, especially on the alternate Necrozmos, because that's really the thing that uh, it's really the only attacker in uh, uh, Zach's deck that can efficiently deal with the um, executors. <clears throat> so getting a, a free knockout on one of the alternate Necrozmos like this is a big deal, um, especially because I think he probably he probably only runs uh, two alternate Necrozmos, maybe three. Um, generally, they just play two though. Um, yeah, he's going to be hitting for 120. So 10 damage off the knockout. All goes back to that choice band placement. Because on the Zork, it really doesn't do anything. Um, uh, Zamora doesn't play Kikui. Um, at least I'm pretty sure he doesn't. Uh, doesn't play Kikui, so he can't get to the 170 for it to like, knock out a Lele. Um, so he's Zork already two shots everything in uh, uh, Taylor's deck. There's really no point in attaching the choice band to the Zork. Um, yeah, Zorak already two shots everything. The choice band doesn't help. The only thing the choice band really helps with in this matchup is getting Lele or the Executor to set up a two shot. Um, those two Pokemon specifically. He's gonna set up Lele. Another Zorak. <clears throat> we just saw Taylor knock out Zamora's Zorak with the Guzma. He basically didn't have much else to do on his turn. Um, so there's a trade, and I'm not a big fan of this trade. Um, I think he has Flowstone Enhanced, so that's why I sent up Lele, so that's fine. Uh, but he has Cynthia, and right here is a perfectly fine play, just to knock out the active. And if he traded away the Lele, that means he's not looking for Guzma this turn. Um, so if you're not looking for Guzma this turn, that means you're just going to Cynthia. So if you're going to Cynthia, trade after you play your draw supporter, build on your hand, so you can have bigger plays next turn. If you're going to Cynthia anyway, and you already have an attacker set up ready to go, there's no reason to trade before you Cynthia. I've gone over this before, uh, I'm going to touch on it again. Um, so Rua comes down. DC to Zork is fine. Um, also an active, like I said, he's definitely gonna play. And then the, there's the Cynthia. There's a Cynthia. Just play Cynthia first. Build on your hand. Trade after the Cynthia. Build on your hand. Make it so you have bigger, better plays next turn. Especially when, like, if you had a big hand, if you had like a ten card hand, and you were gonna Cynthia anyways. For some reason, if you had a ten card hand, you were gonna Cynthia. Uh, it, it happens. Um, and you didn't have an attacker set up, maybe you would trade first because there's so much less cards in your deck and you know what you need to dig for to set up your attacker. You have your attacker set up, multiple attackers set up, uh, but you're definitely attacking with the, the executor here. There's no reason you're not, you're not attacking with the executor. You have your attacker set up, which is the executor. Cynthia first, trade after. <clears throat> All right, we're seeing the Cynthia now. Uh, definitely just wants to see another Zorark. I think and nothing else really matters here. He just wants to set up his draw power. He just benched the Zoru on the far right uh, or on the top. Top of the screen, um, so that one can't evolve, but he can set up one more Zorark, bottom one. There we go. Get another trade going. Just trade, get rid of Bridget. Treat, and yeah, attack with Exeter. See, this all happened, but he could have had another trade after the, uh, the Cynthia. Instead, he traded before the Cynthia uh, for pretty much no reason. Um, even the only play he could have been looking for there was Guzma, the bench guy, to knock it out. But in this situation... Uh, he traded away the Lele. So if you're looking for a Guzma, you just Lele for the Guzma, right? Or you trade first, but you don't trade away the Lele if you're gonna looking for the Guzma play. You don't trade away the Lele for the Guzma. You trade away something else. If you whiff the Guzma, then you go Lele for Guzma. So you're just going to hit him for 100. Does not have much going on. He doesn't have uh, availability for Dawn Wings, and there's a choice made on his active. This is what can happen a lot, actually, in uh, Malamar decks, and this is something people should look to take advantage of, is if they don't have a Dawn Wings, uh, their active can just get trapped very easily. 
So sometimes like not going to chases for a knockout and just getting the extra damage on this while you can before uh, knowing that your opponent can't one shot on the next turn uh, is pretty good. I guess you can retreat this turn, but that you're also fine with that because he sacrifices the metal energy. He's just going to go for the 100 though. <clears throat> I don't know why he wouldn't go for the knockout, retreat knockout. Uh, maybe he's running low on metal energy, um, but that wouldn't make any sense because this is going to get knocked out and this is going to get knocked out. He's going to lose both metal energy for one prize anyways. Um, yeah, I think he definitely should have retreated and gone for the knockout. I'm pretty sure he did not psychic recharge again. He could have psychic recharged again. Um, I just knocked out. Ace of Rolo, that's going to be a big play. Um, yeah, I'm actually going to go back. We need to talk about the psychic recharge <clears throat> real fast. So he ends before psychic recharging. That's correct. Um, also, a psychic recharge on a... Knowing your active is going to get knocked out. Psychic recharge to the Lele, for sure. 100%. Um, you're losing a psychic up top. Um, you have one to discard. You have everything you need for this thing to take a knockout. I'm pretty sure this should have just knocked out this, though. We'll take a look at... I want to take a look at it this again. Because he has two retreat, uh, retreat costs, I'm pretty sure, at the uh, Ultra Necrozma. Um, I'm going to check. I'm just going to look it up right now. <clears throat> Ultra Necrozma. Pokemon card. <clears throat> Get it right here. Slip this up. Uh, yeah, two retreat costs. So Ultra Necrozma, two retreat costs. Yeah, so there's no reason... Let's take a look at this again. He goes for one psychic recharge, debating the second psychic recharge. Uh, yeah, so there's no reason for him not to just retreat this and attack. <clears throat> ever. I don't think there's any a reason ever for him not to just knock this out. Um, this, is a, this is just a misplay. On, uh, Ultra Necrozma player side here. Um, and okay, and if he goes down this line of play still, where he does not... <clears throat> Retreat for the knockout. You definitely still psychic recharge to a Lele to basically give yourself a free retreater, which is really important with Malamar deck because you want to send something up that is not your attacker so you can psychic recharge to your attacker and then retreat to your attacker. Um, so at the very least, you should have psychic recharge to the Lele. Um, but he goes down, I think, the worst route of play. No, no psychic recharge to the Lele. Don't retreat knockout with this one. He could have psychic recharge second time here, knock this out. Uh, he's going down like the worst route of play possible, uh, which is attack for 100. <laughs> uh... And then and then don't set up a free retreater. So this now he needs a psychic energy on this because we are gonna see the Ace Arola from Zamora. He probably doesn't know Zamora plays Ace Arola, but I'll find out. Um trade. Two, that's Arola. Okay, so he, he ace a rolled before he traded again. You should always mac you should always trade uh before you make any permanent actions, you should trade all your trades. Um so he does the ace of roll. Unless you're gonna trade something off of like that what you uh ace a roll, but he's not going to. Uh, he might actually be close to decking out, so maybe that's why he's not trading again. Uh, that's actually very possible. Uh, the letters sting your deck pretty fast. He's played two or three Sycamore so far. Um, so he, it's possible he's actually decking out, so that's why he's not trading again, which is which is then fine. Uh, so yeah, he takes a knockout. Uh, okay, <clears throat> so it looks like Taylor had a flow stone in hand. So that's fine, I guess. Um, he still should have... Uh, so if he didn't psychic recharge here, he still should have psychic recharge here and attacked with this. Uh, he gets Mew... Cut Sycamore. Uh, I think ideally he wants to attack with the Mew here. He wants to offset the prize. Exchange. He needs a Metal Energy. Uh, I don't see a Metal Energy, so it looks like he's going to have to commit to the um, Ultra Necrozma, which actually isn't terrible here because then he can follow up with Dawnwings. Uh, heal Blower on a float. Uh, he does have Dawnwings in hand, so that then he'll be able to um, follow up with Dawnwings GX attack. Uh, on the following turn, actually, which it won't be, which will be pretty good. Um, I'll take the knockout here, um, and then Zamora will respond with a KO on this, putting him down to two prizes, and then Zach uh, ideally would respond with a Guzma knockout on the Lele with Donwing's GX, um, and then I think he'd be in a favorable position from there. Favorable position from there. Um, but we'll have to see if he has that. Uh, oh, I guess maybe he wouldn't be able to close it out by then, though. It might still be rough. Uh, so I think, yeah, he's got like a four card deck left, uh, Zamora does. So we see a Bridget for, uh, an egg. Um, does not have a lot of cards left. <clears throat> he should have everything he needs to close out the game. We see the DCE to the egg. So he's setting up, oh, he's setting up for the big, big, uh, Executor GX play. He also plays the Cartana, which is really cool. All right, back over to Taylor's side. Scoop. All right, he scoops. <laughs> Um, I don't think he sees a way out of that. I, he could have still, uh, GX'd, um, at least gx that, but I don't think he had a way to draw two prizes after that. So let's just, we, he just decides to move on to game two. I think that's a, uh, a fine time to just scoop and move on. 
So game two, uh, Zach, <laughs> both Zach, Taylor will start. Um, turn one, opens it on wings, not ideal. You want to avoid, especially when you have the Mew, you want to avoid, because you can abuse Mew as your free retreater. Um, normally, you use Dawn Wings becomes your free retreater with a float stone, and you have full mobility through that. Um, but uh, <clears throat> in the Zorak matchups, you don't want to put Dawn Wings in play. Uh, so you alternate over to the um, Mew as being like your free retreater. If something gets knocked out, you send up the Mew, uh, and so on. Uh, it looks like it's Sycamore in hand, so he's going for the NK. I think he has metal energy as well, so he'll attach the metal to the Ultra Necrozma. Uh, bench NK, and then probably play Sycamore. Yep, Sycamore. They lay Psychic. <clears throat> seven all right you found another treasure that's important you can get the uh double ink online which is super important um and then we'll just start going from there uh i think this matchup <clears throat> will be a, actually is pretty tough for him just because the uh the executors are actually so tanky um so he has to like commit so much to ko them every time uh paso which is amora zamora once again looks like he has the turn one bridget <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Ultra Ball away the fighting and the Mew for the Lele. Lele is going to find him. Bridget, I assume. I can't imagine him going for anything else. Uh, here I would take Egg and double Zerua because your active Zerua is probably going to get knocked out. Um, active Zerua is probably not, probably going to get knocked out, so you still want the draw power and you don't need to execute super early. Bridget, one Egg. Uh, and unless two Zerua are prized, I would like to see double Zerua. One Zerua. It looks like he maybe has double Zerua prized. I didn't see any other ones on his pass through. Okay, here we go. There we go. There he is. Good. Um, it looks like he maybe prized one Zerua. <clears throat> so yeah, double Zerua, egg. Uh you want even though your egg is like your main attack on this matchup, you need to draw cards. The deck is built around drawing the cards, so. Uh pass back to Zach. Uh Zach's just really looking for a float stone here. He wants to draw that early prize if he can. Alright, there it is. Uh special energy on the uh, Dawnwing is actually very good. He needs second Malamar here. Oh no, he doesn't. He, one Malamar does the does the knockout. Um, actually, I don't know if the special energy is that good on the Dawnwings in this situation. Maybe it would have been better on just to attach to the Ultra Necrozma. I'm trying to think about the math for it. If it's a it's a if he you know if he field lowers his own float zone or it gets field blower, then it can knock out a Lele with a choice band. So yeah, it's actually it's fine there. Sure. Uh, so I see Egg, Multi-Switch, Zorak, Lele, I think. Um, yeah, Wonder Tag. Probably just grab a Sycamore here. Um, no reason not to just try and draw a lot of cards. Yeah, so it's going to be Sycamore. He really just wants to get in a attack that sets up a two-shot from the Executor this turn. He has one one fighting in the discard pile, so even if he just gets, like, Grass Choice Ban, that pretty much sets up a two-shot. Um, then he's, like, probably just good to go from there. There we go. Sycamore. Six, seven, let's see. <clears throat> oh, yeah, we got Ultra Ball, discard two. He doesn't have the grass energy yet. Um, I don't know uh, what he really has access to for trade options. So we're going to go with the Ultra Ball first. Let's have stuff to trade away. This is what you ideally want to do. Uh, actually, I don't know. In this situation, it might have been fine to trade first. That way, you could hope to draw, trade into his orc. So that way, you could Ultra Ball for another execute. Um, But you really just want to draw grass energy as well. So. I don't hate just doing this uh, trade first or uh, Ultra Ball for it first. He does have Flowstone DCE, so we can at least punch it with a Zorark this turn, which I think you would have to do if you whiff the grass. Oh, there we go. There's the grass. <clears throat> Field Blower away the Flowstone. Uh, even though now this means he can put a Choice Band on it, uh, it's still correct because that way it cuts off his mobility, which means he might just not be able to attack next turn. Uh, and then the Swing in for 80, setting up the two shot. That's all that we want to do um, on Zamora's side is just set up two shots. Want to make sure at least whenever we attack, it's going to be a two shot amount of damage, uh, which he did mess up in the first game by uh, misattaching the choice band. But this game two is going pretty straightforward so far. Uh, looks like he's just going to sycamore away everything. I didn't fully see what was in there. Uh, I don't know about discarding the Mew. I maybe I think I would have benched the Mew there and attached the metal to the Mew. Um, I don't. I think. I think it just makes no sense to. I don't think it makes any sense to discard the Mew there. I don't know why he wouldn't just bench the Mew, attach the metal. Um, then you can find Ultra Necrozma later and then abuse it, uh, the energy that was on the Mew. Um, so yeah, I definitely would have liked to have seen bench Mew, attach metal. Um, he doesn't need to attach energy this turn anyways. Um, he has one. He's going to stand in and hit for 150? 
Okay, this is so this is just Oh, he's gonna retreat. Okay. I, I didn't think he had enough psychics in there. Okay, he does good. I was gonna say that was just like a terrible play, but no, he's good. Uh he has enough psychics, so he's good. Um This actually kind of puts uh Taylor in an awkward spot because only his only attacker see see if he had the Mew in play. Oh, I guess he didn't attach the energy because he wanted to set up for that play. So I guess that was fine then, right? Because he wants to attach the energy here. Um <clears throat> attach the energy here instead. Uh but yeah, I think you still bench the Mew. Um, because right now he doesn't have a free retreater. And then Mew becomes the free retreater. Um yeah, I think there's no reason for him not to bench the Mew here. Actually, of course, especially because if you're attacking with Ultra Necrozma, you're assuming it's getting knocked out. So you're then free up a bench space again. If that was your your goal of not benching Mew was to make sure you have a bench space. Uh, you know this is gonna get knocked out. And if it doesn't, you're gonna probably win the game anyways. Um that's how I like to think about it. So then there's no reason not to bench the Mew. Um, because you're gonna get up a, a new bench space anyways when this Ultra Necrozma gets knocked out. Um, so we just see a Bridget from Zamora. Uh, I'm pretty sure he has a DC in hand, so he's getting the knockout. He just needs to fill his bench, and he wants to get more eggs online. Um, <clears throat> trade one. Thinking about trade two. I don't think he needs the choice band. I would trade the choice band here. Yeah, there we go. Trade the choice band. I don't think it actually does anything. Uh, DC active and swing through 120 for the knockout. So he draws to his first two prizes. Dawn Wings is always on the bench for two prizes to close out the game. Um, <clears throat> there we go. There's another Ultra Necrozma. He has the triple. Um, see if he even and then once again, if he had the Mew here, the Mew would be sick because then he could because he needs to go attach uh, triple um, thing or choice band would work too. But if he had the Mew here, he sends up the Mew. It's a free retreater. Uh, he doesn't need to find a float stone, which now he's in a position where he pretty much he has to find float stone or he has to find um he has to find float stone or he has to find uh choice band and metal um or float stone metal. But if he had Mew, all he needs to find is metal energy. I'm not sure how many metal he might be out of metal. There's one in there, I think. Yeah, one metal in there. So one metal left. So not a whole lot. It looks like he's gonna go for Guzma. Um, uh, not sure what he's planning to Guzma here. If he's actually going to use the Guzma. Okay. Yeah. So that made, I don't know what he was thinking there with the Guzma. Uh, I think he was maybe thinking he could knock out a Lele with this Dawn Wing. So this is just, once again, <laughs> he just wasted a bench space with the Lele. Um, would have been much nicer to have a Mew here, uh, in the active actually. Um, so he might just get stuck this turn. We'll see. Six. Looks like he's going to get stuck. There's the choice band he needed to knock out the Lele, but it looks like he's going to get stuck. Um, so he's definitely going to want to retreat to Lele here. Uh, I wouldn't attach there, personally, I don't think. I don't know. We'll see what he's going to do. Two there. I guess he could just hit the... He could just hit the Zorak, I guess, for 80. Um, yeah, you definitely want to send up the Lele for sure, though. Lele definitely needs to come active. All right, 110. That's reasonable, right? Sets up a two shot, makes it easier. You only have the one metal energy left, so who knows if you're gonna find it anytime soon. Uh letter from Zamora. Uh, he definitely wants to transition into knockout Dawn Wings, into knockout Malamar, knockout Malamar, or just hit the active Lele with a uh executor. Ultra ball, get rid of those. And I think he's gonna end up sycamore at the end of this turn. He's gonna get the executor. Oh no. Oh, I didn't see any executor in his deck, actually. He might have uh, the last couple prized. <clears throat> so he's either going to have to find double puzzle, which shouldn't be ridiculously hard if he has a uh, Sycamore to double trade. Uh, Zorak's in the hand. Yep. Uh, he's got the Executor GX in the hand. Trades first. Uh, so once again, he has Cynthia in hand. Um, he's another Ultra Ball now. Um... But I see no reason for him to not have played Cynthia first. Unless he's looking for a Guzma play. Um, which he, now he does have. Uh, so we'll see what he goes with. I guess if he's digging for the Guzma play, then that's fine. Uh, DCE. It looks like he will probably be going for Guzma. Can't imagine he would just hit the active. Uh, yeah, he's going to go Guzma, not got Don Wings. All right, that's reasonable then. Luke digs for the Guzma, finds the Guzma. Uh, he brings out the big executor. <laughs> um, I think I would like to see him letter here. Um, to get the letter out of the deck, you don't want to draw letter... I mean, yeah, I guess letter isn't terrible to draw off an N. Uh, you could take two more cards out of your deck then instead of having them be in your hand and then you can trade them away, I guess. So yeah, I guess I, I guess letter's fine there, keeping letter. <clears throat> so there we see uh, 
Floatstone for Taylor. Uh, looks like he's just going for the knockout on the. He's gonna go for the knockout on the Zorark. To there. Yeah, looks like he's gonna go for the knockout on the Zorark. Go down to two prizes. Uh, he doesn't really have any way to close out the game though. If an executor becomes uh, Zamora's main attacker here though, um, can't set up the big one. I don't think. Uh, even with the multi switch, right? There's no way he sets it up. And he had the baby. Uh, I'm not sure of its damage output. I don't think it's gonna, it's gonna get a knockout here, though. Um, he has the baby uh, access to the baby execute as well. Maybe he's gonna do a Guzma play off the bench for the baby one. Uh, the baby executor. We're gonna have to see. Yeah, so there's a grass to the bench. So we just tied it up to floatstone. Um, so I don't like that play just because you want to leave this open for a choice band. There's no reason to floatstone this guy over floatstone and lay layers or arc. So he definitely should have sent up Layer Zorark and Flowstoned it. Um, and then, you know, or just even sent up the, well, you sent up, you sent up the thing with the Flowstone first because you're going to give something free retreat. Give free retreat. Uh, double puzzle. I assume for N and something. Let's see. Or some way to find N. I don't know. Zach only has, or Taylor only has a three card hand. So N is actually not that crucial. Um, he hasn't picked any cards, so I feel like he maybe thought there was stuff in there that there wasn't. Uh, he's going for the Guzma and the multi switch. Okay. Not sure about that. Um, trade. There's the N. Um, we'll see if he goes with the N. I still don't know if he wants to. There we go. So there's an N. <clears throat> so he goes for the Guzma and the multi switch. I don't think the multi switch makes any sense. The Guzma does. Um, he's going to retreat into the baby executor this turn, the non GX. Smack it for about. 100 120 uh then he's gonna look to guzma up the lele again next turn and knock it out so the multi switch really makes no sense uh at all he should have found another way to find guzma like an ultra ball for ultra ball for lele if there was a lele in the discard power put the lele there's a second guzma put that uh in your hand um instead of the uh multi switch i don't think the multi switch is gonna be doing much in this game um we see ultra ball sick uh juniper's uh guzma and something in Taylor's hand. Um, and then here's come back to that misplay he made where he Lele for the Guzma and then realized he can't use the Guzma. Uh, he, this Lele could have still been in the deck, which means he then this turn could have Ultra Balled for Lele. Um, but instead, he's got this Lele stuck in his active, um, doing nothing. But I don't think he has a way to win the game this turn. He's going to Guzma up his opponent's Lele. I think pass. Pass, and then there's the Guzma from Zamora, and Zamora will win 2-0. Um, yeah, like I said at the beginning of this one, I don't have a ton of experience with both of these decks. Uh, more so, we definitely more experience with Ultra Necrozma than the Executor deck. Definitely seems to be actually like a favorable matchup for Executor though, because um, they just trade really efficiently into the Ultra Necrozma, and Ultra Necrozma is, is Taylor's only way, or Ultra Necrozma is Ultra ne the Ultra Necrozma deck is Ultra Necrozma's only way to deal with these efficiently, and it's not like a favorable prize trade. Um, I definitely think this matchup favors the Zorak Executor deck. Um, if only a bit. Um, definitely yeah, definitely quite a bit. Definitely enough to make it a favorable matchup for the Executors. Um, definitely seems to favor the Executor deck. Uh, the Ultra Necrozma just can't keep up with the prize trade. I think it's like commit a lot each turn uh, and have a lot. Um, uh, we did see a couple slip-ups from Taylor, though. Um, and and uh, one or two from Zamora, but overall it was a pretty clean game from Zamora. Um, and uh, definitely a little bit sloppy on uh, Taylor's side. All right, guys, that is going to do it for round four of uh, Madison Regionals VOD review. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, in the comments, let me know. Uh, what you want me to cover more on uh, in these VOD reviews. You know, what if there's something I'm not touching on that you want uh, information on, you know, put it in the comment section below. That's the only way I'm going to know if there's something else you want to know. And I'm down with sharing all the information, but if I'm not sharing the right information and you want to see some other information, let me know. If I'm sharing too much of some information and it's kind of getting redundant, let me know. Uh, other content you want to see on this YouTube channel, comment section, let me know. Um, that'll do it for now. I'll be back with round five uh, soon. Peace.